up until about a year ago, my life was pretty normal. I lived in the greatest place ever, Brooklyn. Had two cool parents and loved all things science and superheroes. Everything changed though. My dad was killed in the city hall bombing. I couldn't believe he was gone. Your father died protecting this city. Freeze back! Pump! He taught you to follow your conscience in an awesome cruel way. But Peter Parker and his Aunt May, they were there for him. And so was Spider Man. Who I later found out was Pete. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered ended on an interesting note with Miles Morales displaying his power to Peter Parker. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is presented more as a standalone expansion in the same vein as far as Cry New Dawn or PlayStation's Uncharted. The Lost Legacy building a relatively smaller focus story within the same engine and environment. Even though Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is a continuation of the first game, it stands on its own quite well. And by the end of my nearly 20 hour long playthrough, I was left pleasantly surprised and excited about the future of Miles and Insomaniac upcoming Marvel titles. Marvel's Spider Man took an uncharted path, skipping over all too familiar origin story of Peter and focusing on his story dear of being Spider Man. In contrast, Marvel's Spider Man Miles Morales is very much the origin story of the titular character, which sees him becoming worthy of the mantle. After all, with the great power comes great responsibility. Responsibility. While both Peter and Miles have a similar set of base powers, each brings a unique style to their movement in combat that very much reflects their origin. While Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales are best enjoyed with a controller, it's great with a keyboard and mouse setup as well. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, while not a proper sequel, is a perfect follow-up to Marvel's Spider-Man, building upon it to deliver a short and focused story fleshing out Miles' character with a postal stick.